how to record deposits in QuickBooks Online. Hey there, my name is Matt Hulquist with the QuickBooks University. And in this video, I wanna walk through how to record the different types of deposits you're gonna get in QuickBooks Online. Okay, so uh, first of all, there's a couple of different types of deposits you may get. There's gonna be deposits from customers. So if you do a sales receipt and you get paid immediately, and then there's gonna be deposits uh, that maybe come in the mail or electronic for a customer that pays an invoice, okay? Now, in this video, we're going to assume right now at this point that uh, we're not working with the bank feeds and we're not showing those coming in. We're just showing the money coming in and how we deposit that to the bank, okay? All right, so the first thing we wanna do, let's say that we get a payment from a customer and it's against an invoice. So we wanna go up here to the uh, Quick Create uh, menu and we're gonna say receive payment. All right, so we're gonna choose Bill's Windsurf Shop. Uh, let's say that they paid us, we got a, a, let's say it's a check, okay? The check number 1452, you're gonna enter and you're gonna see here, undeposited funds. Now, I always tell clients, uh, go ahead and put the money to undeposited funds if you're not going to the bank every day. This is basically a holding account. So you would get uh, receive payments throughout the week, you know, whatever it is, and maybe you go to the bank once or twice a week. When you take the money to the bank is when you're gonna make the deposit. So the undeposited funds, it's a holding account so that it doesn't falsely give you the impression that that money's already in the bank account, all right? So there's two steps here. You receive the payment, and then when you take it to the bank, that's when you make the deposit. So that's what I'm gonna show you here in a second. All right, so we're gonna leave it to undeposited funds. Now, of course, you can change this to put it directly to the bank if you want to. All right, so we're gonna say the amount received was $85, the amount of the invoice, and it's going to automatically apply it to this invoice, $85, and we're gonna simply hit save and close. Okay, so we received that payment. Now, we go to the bank and we need to make this deposit. So again, we're gonna go up to the quick create menu, and you're gonna see here, there's an option under other that says bank deposit. So we prepare our deposit slip or you know whatever the case may be, and we need to go ahead and move this money from undeposited funds to the bank account, to the checking account. Okay, so you'll see here in the bank deposit, it defaults to checking because that's where we're gonna deposit the money. And we're gonna say that we're depositing Bill's Windsurf Shop. That's the $85 that we just received, okay? And we're gonna also say that we're taking these. These were also in the sample file as money that was received, was put to undeposited funds, and now we're gonna take it to the bank. Okay, so here's where people get a little bit tripped up is what if this is a, let's say, um, you know, a refund and it's not a customer payment? So it doesn't show up here as a customer payment. How do we record that? All right, so here's how you're gonna do this. You're gonna say, there's a, a, a section down here that says, add funds to this deposit. So these are gonna be from anything that is not from a customer, so you don't have an invoice, it's not a sales receipt, anything like that. So we're gonna say that we, Let's say that we received a, uh, you know, a refund of an overpayment on something. We'll say it's utilities. Okay, so we received this not from a customer, but we're gonna say, and I'm gonna pick one here, let's say that uh, PG&E, all right? You have to specify the account. Now, if this is a refund transaction from a utilities expense, you're gonna put that refund directly against utilities. All right, so in this case, we're gonna say, let me go down to expenses, utilities, gas and electric, uh, because this should reduce your expense because you're, uh, you recorded the original expense, now you're getting a refund, it's gonna offset that expense. All right, utilities, gas and electric, and you can put in a description here, refund of overpayment. All right, we'll say the payment method was a check you're gonna record the check number 25241 and the amount $55, okay? So now we've got down here, you'll see the payments from customers are 2147.52 plus the $55 gets us up to 2202.52, all right? 
So this is our deposit and you want to make sure that if you're using a deposit slip or something along those lines, uh, or it could be like a remote deposit capture, uh, you want to make sure that the totals here match that deposit slip or the remote deposit capture. Okay, so we hit save and close. And that money now has gone from undeposited funds over to the checking account. And I want to just show you here if I go to my chart of accounts. Okay, let's go here and let me go to the checking account, view the register. Okay, you're going to see this deposit here, 22052. So again, uh, it says split because it was multiple deposits. And you'll see here when I highlight this, it shows the details of that deposit. All right. Any questions, feel free to leave comments below. Uh, happy to answer those. Also, you know what? Head over to the QuickBooks University. Uh, in the training tutorials, they're similar to this where I go through a lot of detail on why you record things and how you record things. It's not just a simple, straightforward and dry, you know, showing you uh, mechanically how to record things, but it's also a lot of the why behind you do it, behind why you record things a certain way, best practices, et cetera. Plus, I answer your personal questions as a member of the QuickBooks University. So head on over there now, qbuniversity.org.